yeah, I know I'm a little bit late talking about E3 and Microsoft's exclusive conference, but I got some things I need to get off my chest about Microsoft's E3 conference. Stay tuned. What's up guys? Welcome back to the DC Show. This is T. McNeil. Today is Wednesday. And now let's talk some Microsoft E3 news. So guys, as I previously stated, uh, Microsoft E3's conference is officially over. And that's specifically what this video is going to be about today. Uh, just to let you guys know ahead of time, I did not get a chance to watch the Nintendo Direct or any other uh, E3 conference for that matter. Only one I was really able to catch was Microsoft's okay and that's pretty much due to my work schedule um, as you guys already know you know I do work at night so you guys know how it is if, you, if you've ever worked at night before you sleep during the day and you're up at night okay so it's one of those weird schedules and that's that's the reason why a lot of these uploads are pretty much done between these hours now during the day because that's all the uh, time that I have okay but again, I want to talk about um, my thoughts and opinions on the whole uh, E3 conference. And, uh, you know, I was not thoroughly impressed, guys. I'm going to be really honest with you. To all my fellow gamers out there, let me know down below in the comment section if you guys actually did watch E3. Uh, I'm sure that you did. Um, I'm still a little bit upset about the fact that Sony wasn't there. But again, I understand why they weren't there pretty much. Um, even though it's not confirmed why they weren't there, but we know what they're working on, okay, as far as the PlayStation 5 and um, some other things that Sony is actually working on as well. So they want to make sure that the presentation is right. Um, I do expect that E3 2020 next year coming up in June, they'll actually return and we'll get some new trailers, we'll get some new game announcements and possibly some information on the console. So, and I want to talk about um, that information as well as far as the console uh, or Xbox Scarlet that's upcoming uh, holiday 2020. And I want to talk about the games of E3 as well. You know, guys, it was kind of boring to me when I watched E3. You know, I did watch the whole hour and things like an hour and 50 minutes or something like that. And I, like I said, I just wasn't thoroughly impressed. You know, a lot of the games that they show just don't appeal to me, you know. And my, me being a 34 year old gamer, I'll be 35 this year, guys, and I'm just to the point now where I want a different type of gameplay experience, okay? I want a game that kind of similar to like a, <coughs> excuse me, like a Days Gone, you know, a God of War, you know, Uncharted 4, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, you know. I like games like that that give you that single player experience and their story base driven games okay those are the type of games that now being an older gamer officially is the type of games that I like to play you know Microsoft has always pretty much been known for their multiplayer games you know and there's nothing wrong with that you know they're a multiplayer company uh, that supports that type of platform you know Sony on the other hand is more of the single player story based driven games and that's really the reason why I've been hard on Sony's bandwagon for quite some time. You know, I was really watching the conference yesterday and I said to myself, I was hoping that they would show something. I mean, show me something that would draw me back to Microsoft and say, you know what? This is the game that I have to play. This is the title that I need to play. And now I know, okay, I'm going to go in and get me an Xbox Scarlet so that I'm able to enjoy this title. Now, I would say, guys, honestly, out of the entire E3 conference, the only thing that really impressed me was not only the, the console specs, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but what also impressed me was two games. Now, they showed 60 games yesterday, according to Phil Spencer, all right? I've seen all 60 games, but out of those 60 games, two games is only games that impressed me. Now the first game was the horror game based off of um, the 1995, uh, what, what was that movie guys, um, Blair Witch, okay. They did show Blair Witch which looks to be exclusive to uh, Microsoft Studios, which is fine, okay. That game alone 
I'm really having my radar very heavily. So that's probably gonna be one of those games where I'm saying, you know what, yeah. I think I'm gonna definitely get an Xbox Scarlet just to have the option to play that game. The other game that impressed me a little bit was the new Halo Infinite, okay? Now, as far as Halo is concerned, you know, I'm glad that Microsoft and Phil Spencer is going back old school. And what I mean by that is with the original Xbox OG that came out all the way back in 2001, you guys remember they launched Halo with that console back then. So I'm glad to see that Phil Spencer is again going to repeat the past in a good way this time and he's going to include Halo as a launch title for the upcoming Xbox Scarlet. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, that's going to get a lot of sales for Microsoft coming out the gate because you still have a lot of Halo fans out there, including myself. Now, I haven't played Halo probably since Halo 2. Okay, guys, and we're talking about 17, 18 years ago. Okay, um, hopefully, based off the trailer, it's going to be something third person like the original Halo game was. It's going to be action based like that. If it's not formatted that way, I won't be touching it. But again, that's pretty much the only two titles out of everything that they showed that really sparked my interest. You know, a lot of the games that they show, guys, honestly, they look very kiddish. Okay, it looks like it's something that a, a 10 year old kid should be sitting and playing, not a 35 year old grown man playing these type of multiplayer games. I'm, I'm just saying, that's just my personal opinion, okay? The games starting are really starting to remind me of Nintendo, okay? And that's the reason why I walked away from Nintendo a long time ago because of the type of content that they create, okay? Um, Nintendo is known for creating games for children. I mean, that's kind of the image that Nintendo has for itself. They're not known for the graphic games. They're not known for the mature adult type games you know where you're looking at real life situations and things like that you know they're looking at the 10 year old kids you know and that's why you have all of these different accessories and beatles and uh, all these different things Nintendo Lab and, and all of these different peripherals that Nintendo has because that's the type of market and the type of crowd that they're advertising to okay and it seems to me that Microsoft is doing the exact same thing, okay? They're not coming out with really strong single-player first-party games, okay? Triple-A games at that, too, to bring in the older gamers like myself onto the platform, right? Because, like I said, a lot of older gamers is not going to really be into multiplayer. It just depends on what it is, okay? So, that really is the only two, like I said, games that impressed me. Now, I do like the fact, guys, of how Microsoft's uh, presentation kicked off. You know, I'm glad that Phil Spencer actually learned his lesson when it comes to presentations and introducing, you know, a new console. Because back in 2013, if you guys remember, uh, with the OG Xbox One, you know, they had this whole gimmicky situation going on where at one time you were able to have like a split screen uh, experience so basically you were able to play the game on one part of your screen and then on the other part of your screen you were able to like watch the football game or watch a movie or something like that and that was during the time when a lot of cable companies you know and this whole media thing blew up where you're able to multitask and basically what Microsoft was doing they were treating the Xbox One OG like a cable box okay if you look at the back of or if you guys remember the um, ports on the back of the Xbox One OG you know they had the cable in they had the cable out so you were actually able to watch TV also through your Xbox One if you guys remember that alright and, and again it was just like a cable box and then they had the whole DVR uh, experience and things like that being able to digital video record uh, content from live TV and saving onto your box and you know things like that at the time that was fine but it kicked Microsoft in the butt because a lot of gamers just didn't care for that what the gamers care about guys gaming okay so I'm glad to see again that Phil Spencer learned his lesson from that point and now their whole presentation has changed around to the point where they're showing nothing but 
games, games, games. So he got that part right. As far as the type of games, it's just not appealing. I mean, State of Decay 2, you know, okay. Uh, Dying Light 2, not impressed, you know. Uh, Ori, not impressed, you know. Um, so many other single studio games, too, that they showed, you know, again, it just did not appeal to me, okay? So, um, you know, it is what it is, man. Now, as far as the console, or the upcoming Xbox Scarlet, I think that probably was the only thing that really impressed me out of the entire uh, E3 conference for Microsoft. You know, I do like the fact that the new console is going to be supporting 8K resolutions. It's going to have um, the next generation ray tracing ability. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be great. Um, it's still going to support 4K as well, and it has 120 uh, hertz refresh rate. Okay, guys, so that's great. And the loading times are going to be reduced significantly, so I think that's also a great thing. But the only thing with that is the fact that we still don't have a price point on the console. Okay, we still don't know an exact release date. Hell, we don't even know what the box is going to look like. So it's still a lot of information out there. We don't know the accessories or anything, so it's still a lot of stuff out there about this box that we just have no idea about, okay? So, but we do know this coming to Harley 2020, uh, but the most important thing out of all of that is the cost. You know, Microsoft has to get this cost right, because if they price it too high, I think if it's $600 or somewhere around there, they're going to lose a lot of business, and people are not going to buy this thing. So, the most that this console probably should cost, in my personal opinion, shouldn't be no more than about 500 bucks, okay? And that's exactly the same cost that the OG Xbox One launched, you know, back in 2013, okay? So, <clears throat> overall, guys, like I said, I was really bored, you know, with the Xbox um, E3 conference, you know, I just wasn't impressed, you know, the games, like I said, just did not appeal to me. Um, again, the only thing that appealed to me was two games out of the entire conference and the specs for the upcoming um, Xbox Scarlet, okay? Other than that, you know, I was pretty much falling asleep, man. Uh, but Microsoft, like I said, they did get some things right, like I said, as far as their presentation is concerned and their focus, I think it's in the right place when it comes to just games, 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 as Phil Spencer always likes to say, you know, but... It's not enough content to really draw me back into Microsoft and say, you know what, this is what I need to play in order to, um, you know, buy an Xbox again. Oh, and I will say that Cyberpunk uh, 2077 does look pretty decent too. Okay, so I'll say three games. Okay, Gears 5, not really interested in that anymore. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, not really interested in that. Okay. I mean, those are really old franchises, and um, I think those franchises had their time. Okay, I'm not saying that they're done or, you know, anything like that, but, you know, that's at least three titles that I'm interested in playing, but I'm thinking about more so the future after those titles are played. What else are you guys going to come up with? So, Xbox Scarlet will be cool, but I think I'll, I'll be one of those late adopters, and I'll just wait till maybe two, three years after the console launches and then, you know, give Microsoft and the studios behind these games some time to really create some AAA games. Fingers crossed. Right. But you guys, uh, give me your thoughts and opinions on E3 for all my gamers out there. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about the conference and uh, we'll go from there. Also, guys, make sure that you like and share this content. I would definitely appreciate that. Also, if you enjoy the content, make sure to just smack the hell out of that subscribe button. And finally, do not forget to tap the bell symbol. That way, you receive notifications first when the DC show puts something new or, in some cases, updated content. So, I appreciate you guys watching and listening and tuning in. Until the next time, have a good one.